Moore's law, the prediction that the number of transistors on a chip would double every two years, has been declared dead over and over again. Yet every time it bounces back, evolving into something more impressive than before. What we're witnessing now isn't the end of Moore's law. It's the beginning of its most exciting phase yet, one that will reshape everything from your smartphone to artificial intelligence. You might think computer chips are just tiny rectangles hidden inside your devices, but behind those little pieces of silicon lies one of the most complex and important races in technology today. What's really interesting is that the true innovation war isn't happening on your screen or in flashy apps. It's happening deep inside the chips themselves. This is why tech giants like Apple, Google, and NVIDIA are all pouring money into designing their own custom chips. It's not just about saving money. It's about gaining an edge in performance, speed, and efficiency. The kind of edge that defines who leads the future of AI and who falls behind. Take NVIDIA as an example. Their current GPU, the Blackwell, is already astonishing with 28 billion transistors. But what's even more insane is what comes next. Their upcoming Rubin platform could pack more than a quadrillion, that's 1.3 million billion, transistors into a single server. This isn't a far-off dream. It's happening right now, and it's happening fast. But there's a problem. Artificial intelligence is advancing incredibly quickly. Its capabilities are doubling roughly every seven months. That's like tripling in power every single year. Meanwhile, the hardware, the physical chips we rely on to run all this AI, is only improving at a much slower pace. This growing gap between what AI wants and what chips can deliver is becoming a major bottleneck. And that's why the entire semiconductor industry is working on solutions at every level, from materials to architecture. To understand what's really going on, we need to talk about the most fundamental part of all modern electronics, the transistor. A transistor is a microscopic switch that can turn electrical signals on or off billions of times per second. Everything digital in your life your phone, your laptop, even services like ChatGPT, runs on billions of these little switches. The more of them you can pack onto a chip, the more powerful that chip becomes. In the early days, these transistors were built flat on a piece of silicon. Think of them like laying tiles on a floor. These were called planar transistors. Simple and effective, but limited. As we kept shrinking them to pack more into smaller spaces, problems started showing up. They leaked current. They weren't as reliable. They just couldn't keep up with our demands. So engineers came up with a clever solution. Instead of building the transistor flat, they raised a part of it into a vertical fin shape, like a tiny shark fin sticking out of water. This design, called FinFET, gave engineers better control of how electricity flows through each switch. It was a major breakthrough and carried us through the last decade of chip improvements, but now even FinFETs are reaching their limits. So, once again, the industry is evolving. The next big thing, it's called Gate All Around, or GAA for short, but let's just think of it as a new kind of transistor where the gate, the part that controls the switch, completely wraps around a flat, ribbon-like channel. Imagine stacking lasagna noodles and wrapping each one in foil. That's roughly what this looks like at the atomic level. This design offers even better control over current, allowing transistors to get even smaller without leaking or overheating. This breakthrough is already making its way into chips made by companies like AMD and Apple. Chipmaker TSMC is leading the charge, with new processes that allow them to squeeze 300 million transistors into just one square millimeter. That's a space smaller than the tip of your pencil. But redesigning transistors is only part of the story. Another big change is how power is delivered to the chip. Traditionally, all the wires that bring power to the chip are placed on top, mixed in with the logic circuits that process data. This is a bit like trying to route all the plumbing and electrical wires through the ceiling of your home. It gets messy, crowded, and inefficient. The new solution is called backside power delivery. 
Instead of cramming everything on top, engineers are now rerouting the power lines to the bottom of the chip. This clears up space on top, allowing data to move more freely and reducing the overall energy loss. It's a small architectural tweak, but one with massive performance benefits. Both Intel and TSMC are racing to make this a standard feature in the next wave of chips. Now, all of these improvements are helping us shrink transistors to truly mind-boggling sizes. According to iMac, one of the world's most advanced chip research labs, we're on track to build chips with features just 0.2 nanometers wide by 2037. To put that in perspective, that's only a few atoms thick. But to go that small, we can't just keep spreading things out flat. We need to build upward. Enter CFETS, short for Complementary Field Effect Transistors. These take the current nanosheet transistor and stack it vertically, like building skyscrapers instead of expanding a city outward. This vertical stacking saves space, boosts performance, and allows us to continue shrinking chips well into the angstrom era. That's a scale even smaller than nanometers. Of course, printing something this tiny onto silicon isn't easy. That's where lithography comes in, the ultra-precise process of projecting patterns onto a chip using light. The newest generation of these machines, called high-NA EUV lithography, can etch patterns with astonishing accuracy. Built by ASML, these machines are already being used in advanced chip factories around the world, and the next generation, called hyper-EUV, promises even greater precision for building transistors that are just one atom thick. But there's one more leap we'll have to make moving beyond silicon itself. For decades, silicon has been the foundation of computing, but it's reaching its physical limits. To go further, researchers are turning to exotic materials like 2D materials that are just a single layer of atoms thick. These new materials could eventually replace silicon in parts of the chip and allow for even more compact, efficient designs. Another contender is graphene a super-thin, super-strong material made of carbon. Engineers are also exploring carbon nanotubes, tiny, rolled-up sheets of graphene, to build transistors that can run at extremely low voltages. This would drastically reduce power consumption and make chips far more energy efficient. But these materials come with challenges. They're delicate, hard to produce in large quantities, and tricky to integrate into existing designs. Still, the industry is making progress. In the future, chips won't just be one flat slab of silicon. They'll be more like sandwiches, multiple layers of different materials and functions stacked together. One layer might handle AI, another might handle graphics, and another might store data. Each layer can be optimized for its specific task, unlocking new levels of performance. This brings us to a lesser-known but critical challenge, memory. While computing power has skyrocketed, memory, the part of the chip that stores data, hasn't kept up. Fast memory types like SRAM are built using transistors too, but they don't shrink as well. As a result, memory ends up taking up more and more space on the chip, limiting overall performance. Some memory types, like DRAM, are now being stacked in 3D to save space, but it's not enough. What we really need is a memory system that can evolve along with the logic parts of the chip. Interestingly, those vertically stacked transistors we talked about earlier may be just the thing that solves this. Their shape fits perfectly with how fast memory is structured, allowing for better performance and higher density. So. What does all this mean for you? It means your devices will continue to get faster, smarter, and more energy efficient. But it also means the costs of designing and building these chips are rising rapidly. The factories, the tools, the materials, all of it is getting more expensive. As a result, companies are looking for ways to squeeze more value out of every transistor they manufacture. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the future of tech.